Welcome to the latest Notes from the Control Tower, and in this episode I'm going to discuss the basic statistics of the Convair XFY-1 Pogo and compare them to the other Tier 8 fighters. Hello there. I suppose by now many of you are deep into your first day's grind for the new Tier 8 reward aircraft, the Convair XFY-1 Pogo. So I thought you might like to take a look at the statistics of the plane that you're all working towards. I'd like to express my appreciation of Twitch subscriber Klausowicz, who helped me with much of the information that you see here. So here's the spreadsheet laying out all of these statistics for all of the Tier 8 fighters, and there are a lot of them. Let's just scroll along until we get to the end, which will be the Spitfire 14 just coming into view now. And most of this information you can see in the hangar UI. I have added some from a third party source for auto aim angle, dispersion angle, and overheat time. Now, in the interest of brevity, for once I'm not going to explain how this spreadsheet works, so let's crack on. And what have we got with the gun armament? Well, the POGO, as I'm going to call it in the, with this video, uh, again, for the, in the interest of brevity, uh, has a very familiar set of uh, guns for 20mm M3s, and these are exactly the same guns right down to the statistics that you can find on the other another premium american aircraft over here the x-15c and they have a range of 2500 feet more or less at auto aim angle of 2.5 degrees which is fairly average dispersion angles i would say at 0.55 is a little bit high uh, we need to ignore the things like the 0.2s and the 0.25s and the sniper aircraft because they get assisted uh, with their accuracy so you can land those long range shots. But as I scroll across, I actually do notice that the cannons on most of these aircraft actually are either 0.55 or 0.6 dispersion angle. So in fact, compared to the other aircraft uh, to tier 8, there's nothing to worry about here uh, on the POGO. And the overheat time is a relatively generous 8 seconds, so that's good. Survivability is rated at uh, second best in class, 12. It's just a smidgen behind the XF-15C again. Um, 400 hit points is second best in class, but of course, hit points don't go very far in World of Warplanes, especially if you're facing something like uh, uh, a heavy with high DPS, or even something like a JL-1A37 Shen Yang with 580 DPS per second. So bear that in mind. And also I happen to know that the fire resistance here is pretty poor as well. Something you're gonna to have to think about. Be careful with your pilot skills. Be careful with what equipment build you go for in case you increase this risk of fire quite high. Air speed, it's sort of middling um, for a high energy fighter. If we scroll across, it's actually not much faster than most of the turn fighters either. Uh, so that's not particularly terrific. The cruise speed is rated at third best in class, but you're not going to be doing your business serve at the cruising speed. You want to be pretty fast. And we'll talk about that in a moment, the boost max speed. Um, skipping over that quickly, boost duration is good at 12 seconds, second best in class. Again, the XF-15C uh, is better. And here's a good um, statistic. The maximum dive speed is 590. It's only exceeded by the J8M, which is a, a bit of an outlier in this comparison. Um, so bear that in mind already beginning to form an impression here, which I'll talk about in a moment or two. Um, when we come to manoeuvrability, it definitely isn't the uh, high energy fighter side of things. Um, the turn rate is like a P51H, uh, a little bit less than the ME209. Same as the I250, you get the picture, the P80 as well. We didn't talk about the DPS, so I'll just as I look at the P80, we'll come back to that in a moment. We'll do that after altitude performance. Um, the optimum range 223, stall speed is a little bit high at 112, there's certainly not a turn fighter to be seen in here. Uh, you're definitely in amongst uh, the high energy fighters. And well, having said that, the altitude performance is therefore just a tad disappointing. There are plenty of the high energy fighters that are going to easily get above you. You can see them here, P51H, the ME209, the Horton 229, the J8M again, an outlier, best in class on that. You will be able to get above most of the turn fighters though, so there is where I would advise you to use your dive speed. Try and find the turn fighters in a low energy configuration, dive in them and then boost away. That pretty much goes for anything that's below you. So, first impressions are 
the, this is a high energy fighter for sure. And while we're just talking about uh, the DPS, which I said I would mention at this point, uh, 460 is not great. It's not terrible either, but it just is bringing me to the P-80A. Look at that, what that buff has done. It's made the P-80A's guns, Daka Daka machine guns, notorious for being low damage, the second best in class. Isn't that interesting? If we pop down to a worst in class figures, we can see some stuff which I want to highlight. Well, I've already talked about the fire resistance. There you can see it, third worst in class, so be careful of that. And here's the boost maximum speed, not great. Second worst in class. It's as slow as the KI-94-2 over here, but bear in mind that's an awful lot more maneuverable, so it has a different trick up its sleeve, certainly one that the Pogo doesn't have. And the only aircraft that's actually worse is the LA-11. And if we go into maneuverability, we can also see that the optimum range in which uh, maneuverability characteristics don't degrade is 223, which is worst in class. Now, you're probably not going to notice it, but you may struggle to keep this in the envelope where it performs best. And the stall speed, as I already noted, is actually second worst in class in well, as well. So what do I conclude from these figures? Well, I've already said it's clearly a high energy fighter. This is by no means a turn fighter. Is it a good high energy fighter? Hmm, I'd say it was an average one. Uh, the altitude performance is certainly not stellar. The speed is not great either. You're going to be relying on your guns and your overheat time. And in many respects, it's like a slightly, at least on paper or electronic spreadsheet, it's like a worse X-15C. Um, so if you have this aircraft, I'm going to suggest that you're going to find that the Pergo performs very similarly to it, but just a little bit worse. Now, is that a bad thing for the game? Well, I'm going to say straight away, no, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, one of the problems we've had with uh, aircraft coming into the game this year is that one of them has been very good, the Masher, and I think you could make a strong argument for the B-29C, particularly when it's specialised, being overpowered. And there is absolutely no doubt that the Tier 6 XP-54 was grossly overpowered, and still is, even though it's now faces Tier 7 battles 20% more of the time. So in that respect, I think the World of Warplanes team has done a good job. But from your point of view, do you want to grind um, what is going to be a long, hard grind in order to get an aircraft which is at best average? Well, only you can make that decision. But one thing's for sure, you would need 600 certificates in order to uh, pay up uh, all of the candy trail, which is uh, 77 pounds, a lot of euros and a lot of dollars. And one thing's for sure, I don't think I'd be paying that kind of money to instantly get this aircraft. I would recommend you get as far along the trail as you can. Uh, and then if uh, you're coming to the end of the event and you haven't quite got there, just by the number of certificates you need, you're not missing out. If you don't have this aircraft in your hangar today, don't worry. You're not suddenly going to face lots of these and find your games being ruined by them. And you feel the need that, to have one in your hangar it's not that good an aircraft on paper. And there you have it. That's my look at the statistics of the Convair XFY-1 Pogo. And whilst we're looking at uh, the wallpaper here, um, something I hadn't appreciated, but I can see clearly now, the guns are mounted on the extreme ends of the wingtips. Uh, I don't think that's going to be too significant, but it perhaps is worth noting. So what do we think of this aircraft? Well, on paper, it looks like a fairly ordinary turn fighter. It's not looking as if it's going to be overpowered uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that's a good thing. However, bear that in mind, if you're tempted to make extreme efforts to grind your way through to, to this aircraft or spend lots of money in order to get it, you're not getting the latest overpowered item in the game. You'll be getting something that will sit in your hangar and possibly you won't want to play too much because it's, on the face of it, rather ordinary. I hope you found that useful and that if you did, you'll come back and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Cube signing out.